Well, today's the day to get this garden weeded out. You can see the beds in the forefront have already been done, and now I'm working up there with an action hoe. It's kind of a stirrup hoe, and I'm whacking it good to uh, cut off the roots of the weeds, and then I go back with a rake and rake up the debris, which will all go into the compost pile. And here I am near the onion bed using the action hoe again to chop off those weeds. Get the stubborn ones and go back and rake them up and clean it out. Yeah, got some good work done. Got the garden paths all cleaned out from here all the way up to there. So that's uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beds that are clear, and the paths between them are clear. And I've got two more beds and a flat area at the top. And then all that green has to come out up here so I can plant in there. But I'm a no-till garden. All you saw me do was take that shallow hoe and pull out the things on top and cut off the roots. And I'll be taking all that debris and putting it in the compost. So the next thing I'm going to do is right here, where you saw me clear out this area around my seating area here. I made this bed. I'm going to plant flower seeds in there. And looky here, my Mount Morency cherry is getting some blossoms. And my Gala apple is getting blossoms right here. They're going to turn into apples. And there's a couple other places too, like right over here. I'm going to try and eat a lighter breakfast this morning, so I'm comparing PB2 to peanut butter. The peanut butter has 180 calories for 2 tablespoons and 15 grams of fat. The PB2 has 45 uh, calories and only 1 gram of fat. And I really enjoy the taste of this chocolate PB2. Now, the bread has 100 calories a slice. Or you can compare it to rice cakes, which have 40 calories per rice cake. So I'm putting mine on rice cakes this morning. These are the two I'm comparing from Aldi. To mix up the PB2, you just put half as much water as you do the PB2. One serving is two tablespoons. I'm using four tablespoons of PB2 and two tablespoons of water. And then just mixing it up into a spreadable consistency.
Hi, I'm back out in my yard and I'm about to plant flower seeds around that espaliered fruit tree area. Flowers I'm going to plant, I'm trying to make a choice. I found these four and I'll probably be going in the shed and looking for more. But there's these Canterbury Bells. They're so pretty. They say they get to a height of 18 to 36 inches. So that would come up above the lower um, branches of my espaliered fruit tree. So that might be too tall for there. Then I found these delphinians and they get to a height of four to five feet. Hmm. I don't think they'd work there either. Hmm. Then there's these pretty malva. They get to a height of three to four feet. Nope, I think that's too tall. And then there's these four o'clocks and they get to a height of two feet. So I think those will work. Well, I found a bunch more flower seeds. Some of them are kind of old <laughs> and a couple of them are really old. And I just had a thought. I found these Shasta daisies that were given away by a newspaper up in New York to Times Union. And look at this. I remember now that after my mom passed away and I was up in her house and we were cleaning things up, I had found these and I thought I'd take them and see what would happen. And I never did plant them. So they look, I mean, one package is open so I can see what they look like. And they're, they look okay. They're not uh, moldy or anything like that. This one's never been open. So I'm going to try these inside, to try to start these inside in a little container. Wouldn't that be fun if they grew a piece of my mom that uh, I can grow and then save the seeds from these. Now I don't expect they're going to grow, but it's an experiment and it'll be fun to try.
Now I'm back over in the vegetable garden down by the first bed where I planted my lettuces and kale and I'm giving that a nice water so the seeds will be encouraged to germinate and come up. There's already some coming up. And right next to that bed is the strawberry bed that I uncovered. So I'm going to give that a drink too and encourage them to come along and if you look close you're going to see a couple of them already have some strawberry blossoms on it. Okay, now I'm going to water the newly seeded beds where I had all those cold weather crops like the collards and the broccoli and the radishes and the cauliflower. And when I looked close, they were coming up already. You may remember me telling you in an earlier video that on that fence I have poison ivy. And I didn't show it, but after I finished watering these beds, I went over to inspect that fence and sure enough the poison ivy was coming up and all over that fence in a, in a baby form. And as scared as I am of it, I decided I was going to go ahead and cut it off. And I put gloves on and I went after it and I got my clothes washed right afterward. I scrubbed myself down afterward really well with a washcloth and soap. So wish me luck. I'm really hoping I don't get poison ivy. And now if you look really close, you'll see some of the broccoli and the cauliflower and the beets and the collards coming up. Just itty bitty, just poking through. But they're a coming. And one day later, later, I want to show you that the apple blossoms are actually getting bigger. And on the other side of the tree is my bleeding heart bush. Look at those pretty bleeding hearts. And right next to the bleeding heart bush are my hydrangeas. And there's the old ones, all died off, went through the winter, but look at all the greenery coming. In a little while, those old balls of dried out hydrangeas will have new ones that are pink and purple and blue and gorgeous.